We are learning new information in a case where police say a man was murdered at a Southern Kentucky rental cabin. We are learning some gruesome details in Lexington's latest murder case after hearing testimony this morning. The president is in West Virginia today as part of an effort to help communities battling heroin and prescription drug abuse. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon to you. At least three people have been injured after a building collapse in Jessamine County. The accident happened about an hour ago just inside the Jessamine County line on East Brannan Road near the Fayette line. We are told that one person had to be pulled from the rubble. Firefighters tell us it's a small mail building at an apartment complex under construction. The people hurt were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. We'll have a live report from the scene coming up shortly at 5 o'clock. A man was shot multiple times by two people in a southern Kentucky cabin. That was the testimony today in a murder case in Pulaski County. Jesse Brown is charged with killing Danny Poor on October 11th. As of now, Brown is the only one facing that charge, but police say a second shooter will be charged. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has more from the Somerset courtroom in our top story at 430. Jesse Brown is charged with killing 34-year-old Danny Joe Poor at a cabin in Pulaski County on the night of October the 11th. Police say that it was a night of smoking pot, drinking moonshine, and then an argument resulted in the death of Poor. Police testified that Destiny Duncan saw Jesse Brown shoot Danny Joe Poor in the cabin at the Pulaski County Park. But police say another woman there that night, Kara Whitney Bell, said that Brown's father, Rexel, was the shooter. Police say after looking at the evidence, they believed two different guns were used to shoot Poor. He had one wound to the inner right thigh. The, all the rest of them was in the back. Uh, one was in the back of the leg up near the buttocks um, and the other three were in his um, in his back near his right I'm sorry his left shoulder. Now that second shooter allegedly Rexel Brown has not officially been charged with murder but it was basically stated in open court that he is going to be charged with murder he is already in jail, and in fact, he made an appearance in the Pulaski County courtroom this afternoon. Much more on this very convoluted story coming up at 6 o'clock. But for now, in Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Well, the judge has found probable cause against Jesse Brown and sent this case on to the grand jury for possible indictments. We have learned some new details about a Lexington murder case from police in court today. This information coming out during a hearing for James Kaywood. Now, we want to warn you, you might find some of these details disturbing. Kaywood is charged with murder for the death of James Holiness. His body was found near the train tracks off Manowar Boulevard and Nichols Park Drive last week. Police say Holiness was decapitated and stabbed 80 times. They found Kaywood asleep about 30 yards from the body. They did a quick search of the area. Um, and in campfire, they located what appeared to be the head of an adult male white. Officers also uh, searched the area approximately 100 yards away. They located a, a headless body. Police say Kaywood told a friend he killed Holiness, and that friend notified police. The case has been waved on to a grand jury. We'll have more on the case ahead on WKYT News at 530. Police have made a second arrest in a violent Lexington home invasion. Jordan Blackburn is charged with burglary. Last month, police say Blackburn and Michael Wall shot a man inside a home on Mount Four Acre Drive. The homeowner told police he woke up to find the two men inside his house and was shot when he confronted them. Walls admitted to the burglary, and the victim was able to identify Blackburn from a photo lineup. President Obama is in West Virginia today announcing some new steps to fight the increase of drug overdose deaths. Kelly Meyer tells us how local roundtable discussions were the driving force behind the national address. It's an epidemic that's plagued nearly every city across America and something every community can relate to. Now lawmakers are commending those communities for bringing the concern to a national level. The president's announcement today means the administration is going to react to what we heard in Knoxville last month about this epidemic. Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander says the president's visit to address prescription drug abuse is a direct result of a roundtable discussion in Knoxville. 
He says the president's announcement includes a concern that Knoxville area physicians and community leaders raised at the roundtable in September. They worried that the Medicare patient satisfaction survey actually had perverse effects, encouraging physicians to overprescribe painkilling opiates. West Virginia Congressman Evan Jenkins agrees that it was local community concern that pushed this issue into the national spotlight, but wishes the president touched on recovery in his plan. There are so many people uh, ravaged with the addiction uh, to opioids or heroin or drugs in general and are needing continuity of care. The president said he'll review the patient satisfaction survey used by Medicare to see if it's a contributing factor in the overprescribing of painkillers. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. President Obama visited a family resource center in Charleston, West Virginia, and laid out his steps to take on the war on drugs. Here in the bluegrass, it is another beautiful fall day with sunny skies and warmer temperatures. And we are going to enjoy this weather right on till the end of our work week. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. Very nice out there yet again today. As you mentioned, this gorgeous fall rolls on. But you got to wonder, when do we kind of have to ante up or pay up on all this gorgeous weather we've been accumulating in recent days and in recent weeks? Overall, September and October, very nice for the most part. Uh, nothing on defense. Except a little cloud cover in the parts of northern Kentucky. And if you're out this evening, should be another splendid fall sunset with some of those high ice crystal clouds that are showing up out there. Frankfurt, Georgetown, Lexington, just north of Richmond, everybody in good shape as of now. Here's a uh, station cam on uh, WKYT looking behind the station. Weather garden there on the bottom, blue skies over top with a hint of some of those ice crystal clouds. Weather headlines changes to that weekend forecast that we've been detailing over the past several days. Rain will increase and even bigger changes are lurking as we go into next week. That final week of October is going to pick up the pace a little bit in terms of the overall weather pattern. When I come back in a few minutes, we'll talk about the possibility of some decent rain totals that show up over the next week and change in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. The Breeders' Cup is next week, and 300 extra hands are on deck at Keeneland preparing for the massive crowds expected. The Breeders' Cup host, Keeneland, is hiring the extra people to work in areas like guest services, parking, security, concessions, and culinary. Most, if not all, of these workers will make minimum wage. Organizers say they relied heavily on guidance from Breeders' Cup officials. They've been very helpful to us here at Keeneland to go through position by position, department by department to make sure we were adequately staffed. We will take a closer look at the seasonal hiring at Keeneland for the Breeders' Cup ahead on WKYT News at 530. And that will be a very busy weekend because UK is planning special activities ahead of the Tennessee game on Halloween. Families can enjoy trick or treating and other Halloween activities at Wildcat Park that begins at 330. There will be another pregame concert featuring G Funk All Stars at 450. They will also have a video board set up so you can watch the Breeders' Cup. SEC Network's pregame show, SEC Nation, will be live there at 10 a.m. And the game against Tennessee kicking off at 7 30. The Vatican is strongly denying an Italian newspaper report that Pope Francis has a brain tumor. The newspaper reported today that the Pope went to an Italian clinic several months ago where tests revealed a small curable tumor. And the paper cited an anonymous nurse at the clinic for its story. A Vatican spokesman calls the report irresponsible. News of the Pope's health condition is totally unfounded. It is a totally irresponsible act of the Italian news agency that released this. He goes on to say the 78-year-old Pope Francis enjoys good health. Two Kentuckians making it big in Music City are back on the road with some new music recently released to iTunes. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about today with Halfway to Hazard. Hey, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Always a fun time when you're hanging out with these two. Halfway to Hazard, Chad and David with us. They great stopping by. We love you all stopping by because you're on this like radio tour right now, and you're sweet enough Whirlwind. to stop by 98 won the Bull, where your new single is about to start playing. That's right. This is basically our hometown. You know, we spend a lot of time in Lexington and, and Middle uh, Kentucky and Bluegrass down here, and we want people to hear this new song. We're really proud of it. Okay, introduce the song. It's called Heaven on Down the Highway. And you're gonna play it right now. And we're gonna play it. Right now. Halfway to Hazard, their new single, Heaven on Down the Highway. Got an Alabama angel sitting on the bench seat next to me. All about right now, nothing about what it used to be. Got the winds you looking all shiny and new, ripped down that old. Cracked review, breaking up the stones and going along 
Kentucky boys who we love and adore. You can get their song now. Their single is on iTunes. Go buy it. Go buy it. Tell your family and friends. Halfway to Hazard. Heaven on down the highway on iTunes now. And you can hear it on 98 One The Bull. I'm Deanne Stevens. Out and about with. Deanne, get your phone out and buy it right now. We want to watch. I've already bought it. Who are you kidding? Buy it again. Gift it to somebody. Back to you guys. All right, she lost out to those two. They're, I think we they're could driven. Buy the song is what I got out I of that. I think right? that's the message. <laughs> All right, if you didn't know already, watching Facebook and everything else, the future has officially arrived today. Marty McFly famously traveled 30 years in the future to October 21st, 2015, in the popular 80s flick Back to the Future Part Two. One of the film's predictions is still unclear, though, whether the Chicago Cubs will actually win the World Series. Well, the Cubs lost Game 3 of the National League Championship Series last night to the New York Mets. Game 4 is tonight at Wrigley Field. Singer Adele says her third album will be all about making up. In a post on her social media account, she said her last album, titled 21, was about breaking up. But the next one, apparently titled 25, will be about self-acceptance and becoming an adult. Adele says that includes making up with herself and making up for lost time. Rumors about her new album have been swirling for at least two years. It's expected to drop by the end of the year. Bradley Cooper cooks up some kitchen drama and Fandango crashes under the force of Star Wars. Suzanne Marquez has your eye on entertainment. The Force is stronger than Fandango. Demand for tickets to see Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, crashed the popular movie ticket website. Sales began just after the latest trailer premiered Monday night. Fandango says it has already sold eight times as many tickets to The Force Awakens as the site's previous record holder, The Hunger Games. The film opens December 18th. One of Hollywood's greatest leading ladies was on the red carpet here in Los Angeles for a film about the women leading the fight for the right to vote. Meryl Streep joined castmate Carrie Mulligan for the premiere of Suffragette. The film is set in late 19th century England during the sometimes violent struggle for equality at the ballot box. We've come a long way in the Western world, but still 62 million girls are denied an education today. Uh, one in three women experience sexual violence. So I think we wanted people to think about that, you know, at the end of the film, as opposed to just seeing it as a historical drama. Suffragette opens in limited release Friday. The stars of the film Burnt attended the premiere last night in New York. Bradley Cooper stars as a burned out superstar chef seeking redemption. The film also stars Sienna Miller and Uma Thurman. I really wanted to immerse myself in this world, which wasn't hard because I love this. I love food. I love cooking. I love eating. It opens next Friday. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Had the opportunity to be out at Keeneland mm -hmm. early this morning, and you know Keeneland's beautiful anyway. Sure. But on a day like today, boy, you just didn't want to leave. Oh, I know. It'd be a great place to be today mm -hmm. and tomorrow. Now next week, well, we'll let Chris talk <laughs> about that because that's what you're paid the big dollars yeah. for, right? Yeah. Yeah, next week looks a little different out there uh, for most of not only the Lexington area or Keeneland, but the entire country for that matter. We're going to really change up this pattern. So soak up what we have right now. A lot of low 70s that are showing up across the land. 73 Lexington, Frankfurt, 72 Corbin and Jackson. Look at that view from the National Weather Service down in Jackson. Those colors in the mountains really now beginning to shine through. And we're going to continue to see the color explosion coming your way in the next couple of days. And obviously, we can't find very much in the way of clouds in the sky, so you're not going to see a whole lot of precipitation. Though, similar to last evening, some of those ice crystal clouds are showing up on that western and uh, northern horizon. So we may see another very fiery looking sunset as the sun sets guys through those ice crystal clouds coming up in a little bit we'll show you uh, how things do take a downward turn for the weekend hate to be the bear of bad news we'll break it down in a few guys Again, we'll let you do yeah. it, Chris. Thank you. A firefighter competition and the worst excuses given for calling in sick. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Firefighters from 17 countries are competing in Alabama this week in what ESPN calls the toughest week in sports. Competitors climb five flights of stairs while carrying more than 80 pounds of gear. 
And in another part of the race, they drag a 175-pound mannequin. The competition is at Montgomery, where a team of firefighters currently holds the world record. All right, we've all done it, or at least thought about doing it. Not Sam and I, though. No. Try to take a sick day at work when you're really okay. Well, if you're going to fake it, you need to have a really good reason, right? Well, here is a list of a career builder says some of the worst excuses actually used for calling in sick. Number 10, I can't make it to work because my cat is stuck in the dashboard. Number seven, my wife put all of my underwear in the washer. Well, that's that's never good. How about number two, I can't come into work because I'm stuck under my bed. Really? And Sam, how about this one? Career Builder's number one worst excuse for calling in sick, the employee claimed his grandmother <laughs> poisoned him with ham. Who would blame their good old grandmother? Yeah, not good excuses. That, very, very low. We have never done any of that. Never, yeah, never, never. Always here at work. <laughs> All right, on that note, stick with us. Here's what we're working on for you at 5 o'clock.